Hello and welcome to the show. Well, listen, I'm so glad that you could join us today. We have a great show planned for you. You know, this year I've talked about New Beginning. This is the New Beginning series for the whole year. But this month, March, we are celebrating phenomenal women. And I have a phenomenal woman who's joining us for Women's History Month. Her name is Wendy C. Brawley. And I'm going to tell you all about Miss Wendy when we come back. So I want you to sit back, relax, and enjoy because it's coming up next. Join the 2023 Miss Plus Size Pageant March the 18th at Burke High School, 244 President Street in Charleston, South Carolina. Again, that's the 2023 Miss Plus Size Pageant at Burke High School, 244 President Street in Charleston, South Carolina. You're invited to Amara Circle of Influence Leadership Summit from Grassroots to Leadership, presented by Amara Community Foundation and Tammy Media Group, LLC. Tuesday, March 28, 2023, 10.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m., 2999 Sunset Boulevard, West Columbia. Reception immediately follows. Guest speakers, Lakeisha Warmack, First Lady of Claflin University, Mayor Julia Nelson of Manning, Mayor Barbara Blaine Bellamy of Conway, Mayor Yamika Robinson of Lake City, Sherry East, President of the South Carolina Education Association, Donna, Wendy, and Jessica, Amara TV host, former South Carolina Representative Kim Johnson, former South Carolina Representative Crystal Matthews, Tammy McCartry, Tammy Media Group, LLC, and Ashley Crayola, the Women's Rights Empowerment Network. For more information, visit AmaraWoman.com or Eventbrite Leadership Summit. Remember, that's the Amara Circle of Influence. Leadership Summit from Grassroots to Leadership presented by Amara Community Foundation and Tammy Media Group, LLC, Tuesday, March 28, 2023, 10.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m., 2999 Sunset Boulevard, West Columbia. Hello, everybody. It's Finkley of the Michael Finkley Show, and you're watching Gold right now. Why? You're watching The Tammy Show. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the show. Well, I tell you what, we're celebrating Women's History Month. And of course, each week I have celebrated a woman. And this woman that I'm celebrating this week is a devoted wife, a dedicated mother. She's a politician, former member of the South Carolina House of Representatives, a, a formerly, originally from Queens, New York, a graduate of South Carolina State and Webster University. She's the owner of CEO and CEO of Amara Communication Group. She's also a television host. I forgot to say that. Television host. I mean, phenomenal, amazing. What can I say? Ladies and gentlemen, I want to present to you Miss Mrs. Wendy C. Brawley. Come on out, Wendy, my friend. Hey, Tammy, how are you? Fine, how are you? I am doing wonderful. Thank you so much for having me tonight. Well, listen, I am so blessed that you came on the show. And folks, she is a dear friend. I've known Wendy for years. And, and Wendy, it is such a pleasure for us to have you on the show and to be able to recognize you during Women's History Month. You know, as we were talking about it, I and we saw the Leadership Summit. So folks, we got to get ready for the Leadership Summit. We're going to talk about that a little later. But I want to really talk about the journey. You know, we're talking about grassroots to leadership 
at this summit, but I want to talk about Wendy Brawley and your journey. So kind of start us out on your journey of where you came from and where you are pretty much now, but in the short version. Okay. I'll give you the, <laughs> I'll give you the abbreviated. abbreviated okay. word. That's right. Um, well, I grew up uh, in Rock Hill, South Carolina, um, raised by my grandmother. And so you will hear every now and then me open my mouth and my grandmama come out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. But she was a wonderful woman. My grandparents were very loving, um, very old school. But, you know, I think that um, that is something now, I, the older I get, the more I appreciate the way I was reared um, to believe that with hard work, you could do anything. Put God first. You can do anything. So that in the back of my mind has always been my mantra that, you know, there's nothing that you can't achieve if you're willing to work for it. And so I, I came to Columbia, South Carolina, uh, met this wonderful guy uh, and married him. <laughs> uh, and we've been married now for 42 years. Uh, we met at USC. Yeah. 42 years. <laughs> and uh, we have, I have two, we have two adult children and one grandchild and, you know, my whole life, I guess I've been interested in how you can make your surroundings better. How do you help build a stronger community? Uh, I've watched as a young girl, people who had very little offer help to people who had even less. Mm -hmm. And that was just something I always kind of admired how we as a community stuck together and helped one another and never really felt bad about where we came from. You know, we didn't know we were what they say, poor, and we were supposed to be downtrodden and all yeah. that. I didn't know that because we were brought up to believe you're just as good as anybody. You know, you just work for what you want and have faith in what you're doing and try to do it to the best of your ability and everything mm -hmm. will work out. So when I came um, into myself as an adult, I worked in state government for about 12, 13 years after graduating college, but just wasn't really happy. Uh, wasn't feeling fulfilled, did well in government, but just wasn't my thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, finally had the courage to push back and leave and, um, and start my own business. Wow. And through that effort, um, I was able to really focus on the kinds of things that I wanted to do because there was a need for it. And that then ultimately led me into the political arena. My husband was very politically oriented. I was not so much, um, but politics affects everything including yes. business, especially business. Mm -hmm. So it was a kind of natural fit. And if you really are serious about making your surroundings and your community better, you have to understand the politics around you because Sorry. everything is impacted by the politics around you. So I ran for the school board and won that position way back in 2004 to 2008, lost the election for re-election, uh, sat out a while, still did my community activism things and ran again for the house when a dear friend of ours here passed away, Representative Joe Neal. And that's how mm -hmm. I got into the politics. But in between all of that, I continued to run my business. Wow. And um, I've enjoyed every minute of it. That's right. Well, you know, Wendy, as you're talking, you know, talking about running a business and you started a Mar Communications Group. I mean, I, I remember seeing the poster and we talked about this um, that said Events Unlimited. And yeah. so you used to do events I did. And, and then it came into communications and television. Yeah. And all that. But what influenced you to really go into communications? What was what, what was the influence behind that, the motivation behind that? You know, people ask me that. And I, I had to really ponder that because I it didn't wasn't something I wasn't a journalism major in college. I wasn't. Um, and, and this was just a different route for me. But I, in high school, I worked on the annual, what we call them an annual book, the yearbook. The yearbook. And I, and I, you know, I love that. And I think that idea of putting things on paper and, and, and putting them on paper in a way for posterity just attracted me. So mm -hmm. that led ultimately to the magazine um, my husband and I formed um, 23 years ago. Wow. The magazine 23, 23 years, years old now. And so uh, it's been a it's been a real journey because, as you know, the industry has changed dramatically in these mm -hmm. 20 years. There was no Really, there was very little known about the Internet when we started the magazine. There was no Facebook and social media. All that stuff changed the way print medium has worked. But mm -hmm. um, that, I think, 
get, dating back to that yearbook and the excitement I had of finishing mm -hmm. being a part of that and putting on paper all the things we did in high school. And I look at that sometimes even today and I say, wow, look at how we looked then and look at where we are <laughs> yeah, now. That's and right. It's amazing. Um, the good thing about things on paper is that they, they are there. Mm -hmm. You can touch them. You can, you can look at them. You can, generations from now, you can still hold them and reflect. Right. So That's I've just right. always been attracted to that, I guess, in the back of my, my little crazy mind. <laughs> I don't say that. Listen, we all have have that other side, you know, that yeah, other yeah. part of the brain. Well, listen, we have some pictures of the of the magazine that I want people to see, um, our viewers to see. Beautiful magazine. Uh, and we're going to be talking about the South Carolina mayors when we come back from the break, because, you know, you taught me something um, that there are African-American women who are mayors in the state of South Carolina. Yeah. Yeah, just show the other one, uh, Tiana, please. And of course, Dr. Linda Bell. I mean, everybody knows Dr. Linda Bell. If you're anybody that kept up with COVID, yes. you know Dr. Linda Bell. Yes, she rose to fame during COVID. That's right. That's right. And this particular um, feature is, this particular magazine is about entrepreneurs who changing mm -hmm. the game in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Be, I, mean, I mean, you, I, and I can say this because when you go to a magazine, it's not just the type of magazine that you sit down and you put it aside. Your magazine is one that you want to read. I passed out those magazines. Man, everybody's like, you got any more? I'm like, no, all gone. <laughs> all well, that's gone. a good thing. That's a good thing. You know, that we is wanted wonderful. to make it attractive and we wanted to make people proud when they saw it, that this was a product that came from us here in South Carolina about us, folks mm -hmm. in South Carolina. That's, That's what you right. find in a Mar Woman magazine, stories about people in our own community. Yeah. And so let's talk about the Amar Community Foundation, because that is a part of Amar's communication group as well. The foundation we started probably about, I guess, in 2011, 2010. And we did that because we we knew as we did all this work in the community, uh, some people may be familiar with our health empowerment tour, which is a free conference that we do in three regions of the state about keeping our families, our lives healthy, mind, body, and spirit. But we found that some of the ability to attract sponsorship and support of the community engagement work that we were doing necessitated us to have a nonprofit arm. Um, because we needed to be able to go to big corporate America or big corporate South mm -hmm. Carolina and say, look, we, we do give back to the community. We do it in the form of our scholarship programs to HBCU students. We've done that for the past 22 of our 23 years mm -hmm. and in the form of the community engagement that we do through the health ministry program. So that was a tool that we used to really get out and do our community work. And it sustains us because it allows us to do this work and then to make it affordable, if not free, for people mm -hmm. to come and participate. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, just thinking about all that you do, I want to talk about, we don't have a whole lot of time, but I want to talk about Amara TV, uh, the Leadership Summit, the networking event that's coming up, the scholarships when we come back from a break, because we're going to take a break right now and then we're going to come back, Wendy, and we're going to dive into what is the who is the woman that inspired you? That's your next question when we come back. OK, OK, we'll be right back, folks. The Orangeburg County Conference Center supports downtown Orangeburg and our surrounding communities. The 6,000 plus square foot space is ideal for groups of up to 400 people attending corporate meetings, conventions, workshops, and special events. Conference Center staff are inspired to ensure that everyone can enjoy the modern amenities state-of-the-art ballroom that accommodates up to 400 guests banquet style and 430 guests theater style. A warming kitchen with hot boxes, ice machine, refrigerator, freezer, and counter space. 
a lobby that accommodates 150 guests with special events outdoors. The comfortable outdoor amphitheater has a video wall and seating. Adjacent to the amphitheater is 12,000 plus square feet of green space that extends events outside, plus complimentary on-site event parking and additional parking across the street. Your event can take place all in one spectacular location. We welcome your special event in Orangeburg. Join us at the Ultimate Bridal Experience Sunday, July 23rd, 2023 at the Orangeburg County Conference Center from 1 to 4 p.m. Become an exhibitor or get your tickets. A large gathering of a variety of local and regional wedding vendors, wedding professionals, fashion show, prizes, and more. Join us for the Ultimate Bridal Experience Sunday, July 23rd, 2023. My name is Randy Dantrell Heath, and you are watching The Tammy Show. Welcome back to the show. If you're just joining us, I'm speaking with Wendy C. Brawley, Amar Woman Magazine, the CEO of Amar Community Foundation, Amar Communications Group, the TV host, the producer. It's all her. Former South Carolina representative. Wendy, thank you again for being on the show. Listen, Wendy, I'm going to get right to it. We're talking about Women's History Month. Who's the woman that inspired you? Well, I mentioned her earlier. My grandmother has been probably the most significant female influence in my life. And I tell people that often because her lessons that she taught me, the things that are really important, you know, to work hard, treat people with decency. You're not better than anyone else, but, you know, no one else is better than you either. And those were things that, you know, were instilled in me as a child. And I grew up at a very turbulent time uh, in the 60s and 70s when it was difficult. I was a young girl, a uh, young, young, young girl, uh, trying to figure out how you fit in in a, in a very strange world. Mm -hmm. And sadly, we see a lot of the things returning <laughs> back to That's some right. of the way they used to be. So we got to be careful. But, you know, she was the type of person that really had an impact on my life. And I, I've been really fortunate, though, because no matter what field or what area of interest I was in, there was always somebody. You know, my mm -hmm. political mentor uh, was Representative Gilda Cobb Hunter. Mm -hmm. Business mentor was Lynette Austin. I remember meeting, seeing Lynette when she owned her. Um, it was a lingerie company in Woodhill Mall when I was in college. I think I was mm -hmm. a freshman at USC. And there she was. I walked through the mall and I saw this black lady who owned her own business. Mm -hmm. And I just marveled at that. And here years later, Lynette was the chair of the board. For mm. the wow. It just goes to show you how Those... life is. I, I've been really blessed to have good women in my life. Wow. That's that's amazing. Full circle. You Full know, someone circle. that you looked up to and now is on your, you know, on your board. Wow. And, you know, Wendy, when we talk about our careers, a lot of times we don't think about it. But I want to ask you, what's your biggest achievement? What do you think has been your biggest achievement with your career? <coughs> Excuse me. Well, I have different nuances of my career, I guess. So from a business standpoint, I think just to be able to sustain our business in this industry, magazine industry, when you see things like Ebony and jet and essence you know kind of fall to the wayside and then have to get reborn uh essence did um you wonder you know my god how can i make it <laughs> you know if these people have been around since before i was born um and you know just being able to be here tw for 23 years um yeah. it's a it's a huge achievement for me that my is we're, that ne we're never going to be rich doing what we do but i am so fulfilled and that is that is a richness that money can't buy. That's right. Wow. Congratulations on the 23 years. You know, Wendy, as we're talking about Women's History Month and, and um, we're talking about being entrepreneurs and leadership, I want you to kind of give us a snapshot about the March 28th Leadership Summit. Well, first of all, I can't start talking about that without thanking you, <laughs> because um, this collaboration that you and I formed to do this event has made this event the most enjoyable thing that I have done in a very long time. 
I, I really appreciate the sisterhood, you know, the working together and we are in the same industry and we just kind of played off each other so beautifully. So I appreciate that. Oh, I really do. And I, I think we're going to set the example. Um, the Leadership Summit, though, is really a chance for women leaders and aspiring leaders to network, support one another, share information figure out what's working in their community and hopefully share that with some of the other women leaders who are there and to encourage young aspiring leaders to know that they can accomplish and achieve anything. Mm -hmm. There's no boardroom that we shouldn't be allowed to sit in. That's right. We should be at the table. We you know, um, we, we, the table. exactly. <laughs> we, you, now you said it because we talk so much about being at the table. But as you said, we need to be at the head of the table. And, you know, one of the things that strikes me is uh, with you, you've been empowering women. How do you continue to empower yourself and the women around you? That's a good question. I, I think I, I, a lot of times when we're doing things, I get, I get so involved. And it is hard work. But then when you see it come to fruition, it's like it sparks a flame in you that it, it really means more to you. It, in your own personal development, perhaps, than it did to the people who said it meant a lot to them. Mm -hmm. So I, I really enjoy them. I enjoy the work. I enjoy mm -hmm. seeing people move from where they are to another place. Um, it, it just, it's very rewarding. And that inspires and empowers me. It keeps mm -hmm. me going. Um, mm -hmm. And that I have been able to say, honestly, I have met some of the most incredible people. Mm -hmm. And these are people who look like they have it all together and do, but they have gone through a lot of challenges and changes to get to where they are. And right. they share those stories with us. And so I just consider myself blessed um, to be able to be trusted in that space with women that they feel comfortable doing those things around us and supporting us and sharing their stories with us. And they really respect, I think, how we tell their story mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the magazine. And, you know, National Women's History Month is about telling your story. Yes, and, I, did, and, I, did, I did a speaking engagement with the VA hospitals across the South region. About that's, that. Know that until I was selected. Yep, yep, it's all about telling your story. And, and that brings me to the television show. You know, what inspired you to really want to start the television show and, and the impact? How is the what is the impact that it's had on the community? Because I know it has had a great impact. But from your standpoint. Well, we started the show. It's funny. We, we, we signed the contracts to start the show in 2008. And it was the, it, the next day the president came out and said the banking industry was falling. It was just gone. So we were like, oh my God, we signed all these contracts. There's not going to be any money around. But, you know, here we are. We made it from 2008 and now mm -hmm. it's 2023 and we're still That's doing right. our show. Um, right. But all we wanted to do was just to expand and take the message to even more people uh, in a way that, you know, some people who may not subscribe to the magazine may catch us on the show and see mm -hmm. the work that we're doing or and want to be a part of what we're doing. Um, attend one of our events because they, they, they saw it, uh, read about it or saw it on the show or met one of the people that we write about in the magazine because they were a guest on the show. Mm -hmm. So all of it really connects. Um, you know, they say you have to repeat something at least three times. That's right. It starts to resonate with people. So the magazine was one way. The event is yet another way. And the television show is a third opportunity. Wow. You know, Wendy, I, I, I have so many other questions that I want to ask you because I didn't even talk about the House of Representatives and working in a male dominated field. But I'm hoping that you're thinking about going back. That's all I can say. I, that's all I'm, I'm going to leave it right there because we even talked about that. But, you know, being a politician, how how hard did you find that to be or challenging? Did you find that to be to get your your agenda, um, the things that you wanted to do for the community, working in the South Carolina House of Representatives. How challenging was that for you? Very. I mean, really, it was um, because the issues that I really championed in the House were the ones that were kind of tough. You know, they were the ones I mean, I I wanted us to make sure that we did not have assault weapons on the streets of our community. Mm -hmm. 
Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that there was equal pay for women. If you're doing the work and there's a man doing that work beside you and you're doing the same job, why are you not paid the same amount of money? Exactly. I wanted to make sure that children in schools were fed and not embarrassed if they didn't have lunch money or their parents couldn't afford it. And you'd be surprised how many children go hungry That's because right. of that. So a lot of the issues that I uh, worked on in the state house weren't the sexiest issues, <laughs> but they were the kind of issues that really bread and butter issues that matter to families. Mm -hmm. And to me, if we're not working to try to help people live better their everyday lives, meeting the challenges that they face every day, uh, if legislation isn't doing that, we what are we doing there? Exactly. What are exactly. we doing there? I mean, if we're not trying to help people with what we do, then we are obviously making things worse. And that is not what we should be doing mm -hmm. as politicians. That's Public right. servants is really what we are supposed to be. Doing. That's right. Servant. And that's what you are. You know, Wendy, one of the questions that I always ask everyone is what's next for you? You know what? My husband asked me the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I think the possibilities are a little bit frightening, <laughs> but I don't know. You know, I want to eventually maybe write a book. Um, I want to uh, continue the work that I'm doing with the publication and the foundation. Um, I haven't really decided as yet whether I will seek political office again. I do know that because of the fight that I mounted with the NAACP, we're going to get our seat back in District 70. We yes. have two representatives. Uh, instead of just one. And that's mm -hmm. important. People need the representation. Um, so I, I really haven't made any plans. You know, I'm not a spring chicken. So I want to enjoy a little bit of life, travel a little bit, um, mm -hmm. and just kind of kick back for a little while before I dive into the next experience. All right. Well, Wendy, what three? What are three words that describe you? Hmm. I like to think I'm happy. Um, I like to think I'm kind. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to think that I um, I try to help people. Help, so. help people. I got, well, that is you all the way. And I must say, I, I want to say thank you so much, Wendy, for taking the time to be on the show and, and to really open up and be transparent as you always are. And thank you for the opportunity to work with you. I mean, I think we're, oh, we are showing, showing it that women in our field, especially in this industry, and as entrepreneurs can work together. Absolutely. Not, you know, and that's so important. It, it really is. And it's been a joy, as I told you. Um, it's been a joy. Uh, you can me. almost finish my sentences now. We, we, that's, <laughs> that's right. That's right. I that's don't know right. if that's scary or not. <laughs> <laughs> that, but that's that sisterhood that we that's talk about. Sisterhood. That's the sisterhood. <laughs> well, listen, tell Paul I said hello I and and, and all and Paul Jr. as well and your do and the doctor uh, that I yeah. said hello. I thank you so much, Wendy, for being on the show. And I thank you for all that you do in the community. And remember that I am here for you if you need anything. The Tammy Show is here for you. Tammy Media Group, LLC, you know we are here for you. Well, you got to do me the same solid that I just did and come on a Mars TV show. <laughs> I will we'll do it. You just tell me the date. You know, All I'll right, be there. We'll do. We'll do we'll, I love you so much, Wendy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. All right. Listen, folks, we had a great show with Ms. Wendy C. Brawley. I tell you what, this is a phenomenal and amazing woman. If you don't know anything about South Carolina and you want to learn about South Carolina and what's happening, you need to get the Amara magazine. And listen, I want you all to come out to the Leadership Summit. You know, we're going to be talking about that March the 28th. We continue to talk about it. So I'm hoping that we're going to see you out there. I'm just so glad that you joined the show. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in. I can't do it without you. Next week, we're going to continue our Women's History Month series with a special guest. So I want to thank my producers, Alicia. Uh, and of course, assistant producers, Tiana, Willie, and Felicia, please subscribe to the Tammy TV show. You know, you just hit that subscribe button. It's the Tammy TV show. Remember, let's be a blessing to somebody today and every day. Call that person and make sure. I thank you, KJ, for being on the show, listening, for joining us. Again, I love you all. Have a blessed week. And again, thank you so much, Wendy. You all take care of yourself. Until the next time. Bye-bye.